Welcome back to Module 9 of Mechanics of Materials Part 3. Today's learning outcome is to derive a very important relationship called the moment curvature relationship. And so last time we summed forces in the x direction and came up with the first moment of area being set equal to zero to find the neutral axis. Now what I want to do is I want to sum moments about z. And the z axis is coming in and out over here or uh, left and right on, on this diagram. On the, on, the, uh, on the right. And so we've got some of the moments about z equals zero, and I'll call counterclockwise positive. And let's do that for this little differential piece of element here, A, dA. And so it's going to have, instead of the total moment, it's just going to be dm for that little dA. So I've got dm, and it's going to be positive because it's causing a counterclockwise rotation above the axis. Uh, and then I've got my force due to stress, which is the sigma sub x times dA into the board, okay, counterclockwise, times its moment arm, which is y. So that's going to be plus sigma sub x times dA, which is the force in the x direction about the z axis, times its moment arm, which is y, equals zero. And so I have the relationship for this little differential area dm equals minus sigma sub x y dA. Okay, there we see it again. Now let's sum up over the entire cross section to come up with a total m. And so the total m is going to be equal to minus the integral over the entire area of sigma x y dA. But you recall, since we're, we're assuming that we're working in the linear elastic re, uh, region, that from the last module we came up with this relationship that for a linear elastic material, stress was proportional to the curvature and, and, and varied uh, linearly with the distance y from the neutral axis. So I'm going to substitute that in for sigma sub x. And so sigma sub x becomes minus e, the Young's modulus, times kappa times y, and therefore I've got m equals the integral over a, the negative the negative becomes positive, e Young's modulus times kappa times, now I have y and y, so that's y squared dA. Okay, so let's pick up from there. Here I have um, what I just came up with, and so Let's take the E, the Young's modulus, which is constant, and kappa, which is constant, outside the integral. And I will have M equals E kappa times the integral of the, over the area of Y squared dA. And that is defined as I, which is the area moment of inertia or the second moment of area. Remember, the first moment of area was the integral over the area of y dA. Second moment of area is the integral over um, the area of y squared dA. And so this again is defined given the symbol I, and it's defined as the area moment of inertia. And we'll figure out how to calculate that later on. And it's also referred to as the second moment of area. And so I can write this as a little shorter hand now that M, the moment, is equal to uh, kappa E, actually, Young's modulus times kappa, the curvature, times I. So we're getting a nice, nice relationship here. And so there it is shown again. And so the moment curvature relationship then is that kappa, whoops, kappa is equal to 1 over rho, or if I solve here, I've got M over E I. And that's my moment curvature relationship. There it is again, M over key, key I. And we notice now that curvature, ka kappa, is proportional to the moment. 
So the greater the moment, the more curvature you get. That makes physical sense, should make physical sense. We also call what's in the denominator here E times I, Young's modulus times the uh, area moment of inertia as the flexural rigidity. And that's the resistance of the beam to bending for a given curvature. So for a given curvature, if I have higher flexural rigidity, it's going to take more moment to get that, that, that curvature. So it makes sense. It's a resistance, again, the beam uh, bending for a given curvature. And so now we've got this important relationship of moment curvature, and we'll be able to continue on.